for me, Czech photography has always been a great, great interest, especially the, 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 the 20s and 30s and, and <coughs> early 40s. Um, and if, if someone would ever ask me if I would choose when and where to be alive, uh, I would say in the 1920s in Prague, because that's where all the art and the literature and the, the intellectual I mean, discourse was taking place. And I would have just loved to be sitting uh, in a cafe um, with all these artists and discussing life and truth, and, uh, because I think that that's what was going on, and, and uh, hopefully we haven't lost that. But um, that always really fascinated me. So even before the revolution, I was going back and buying a lot of Czech photography, coming back and, and selling it here. Um, unfortunately, when the revolution happened, which was very good for, for the Czechs and very bad for me, uh, all the other all the American auction houses and dealers went to Prague and there went that. Um, but in the, I'm also an artist and filmmaker, and um, which is really the soul of, of, of who I am. And being Czech has come through um, to that. Uh, probably many of you here know uh, my personal story. My mother's a Lidice woman, and my husband and I made a film called In the Shadow of Memory, uh, which deals with um, growing up with my mother's stories. Obviously, I didn't live through it, but I did, um, ex I did live through my, mo my mother's stories, and she talked about it incessantly on, an, on a daily basis. Um, so it uh, really affected my life, and what I'm hoping is, is that my contribution uh, to the Czech world um, at large is this film, and I think that that's maybe being Czech is, I'm hoping is, is my largest contribution in this country. Most people don't know about Lidice, say they don't know what had happened, but it also, not only that, the telling the history of the event, but also it deals, it's very personal, it deals with, um, secondary trauma and, and growing up with stories of, um, of trauma and, and hatred. I grew up with hatred of Germans and how I deal with that um, as an adult. And, and what do you do with that? What do you do with all this baggage? And it, it has a lot of very serious repercussions. And unfortunately, um, as we listen to the news every day, there's many, 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 many leadances that happen every single day right now as we speak. Um, so what I'm hoping is, is that the film will be some kind of a, an example or show what happens when uh, to, to second and third generation. I came here when I was 12 years old and uh, to try to define yourself as an American is a very difficult construct because what is American? I mean on one hand it's this line of the three, I mean this kind of very large overblown dream but in a practical cultural sense, it's very difficult because it's a very religious, much more religious country than I was used to from Czechoslovakia. Um, school, for example, where I went is much easier, much sloppier, uh, much less rigorous. So <clears throat> you come to this kind of juncture in which, in, in trying to figure out who you really are and where you really belong. That's really the ultimate question. And when I started working in film, and why I started working in film, <clears throat> is because I knew Czech films which other people didn't know. And there was something that was reflected me, certainly, my, my identity in those Czech films, but also it was a story of artists, of filmmakers, of uh, incredible films that Americans really tuned out of and didn't know. And so, quite naturally, it's like, you know, you see the dirt, you sweep it, with a, with a, you pick up a broom and you sweep it, so, the same thing, you see this issue and this problem, so I decided to try to fill that role. And that led to many, many years of 36 years of screening uh, many, many Czech films, releasing many Czech films in, uh, on DVD or on video, doing lots of retrospectives, uh, and doing lot, and forming uh, big relationships with many Czech filmmakers. I think it was ultimately work that was <coughs> perhaps not as important for, for the American audience even as much as it was important particularly during the difficult years for the Czech filmmakers, many of whom couldn't work and didn't have their work shown in their own country, Some of, many of whom were in exile and were living here. So <clears throat> I remember my um, good friend and mentor, uh, Jan Kadar, who once asked what happens to a young filmmaker who cannot work. And, uh, 
It's a very important question. I mean, what happens to an artist who is prevented from being known, from having his work seen, from being able to have his work work uh, actualized? And it's quite possible that those artists die. So having that work shown, having it presented, really became kind of a lifeline for many of those filmmakers, as I think Jerry's photography and having the photography being visible uh, in, in America was a lifeline for those photographers. And so being that, being able to be the conduit, being able to be that glue that uh, brings the art to people and gets it seen and appreciated became essentially my uh, life's work. And Czech, I certainly distribute and work with cultures of, from many, many different uh, countries and many different uh, cultures. But Czech cinema certainly was a very important and essential element because it's something that I know best and it's, it's who I am. So. When uh, we came over, I was three years old, uh, we were sponsored by the Ravenswood Presbyterian Church, and I don't think you can get you know any more anglicized than being a Presbyterian. But uh, we didn't spend time in Cicero, we didn't spend time in, in Berwyn. We, we really uh, uh, really made our allegiance to, uh, to the United States. And uh, it was at a time in 4850, I think most of you have heard of McCarthy and the uh, Red Scare and all the suspicion, and particularly of immigrants. And the more vanilla you could look, the better off you were. And so that was our modus operandi. And none of us were spies, none of us were communists, uh, none of us were Nazi sympathizers. We just uh, came to America to seek freedom. Just like Ludmilla, you know, she came to earn money. <laughs> and she earned more money faster, I, I like that, uh, than uh, she could in Slovakia. But that, those were the motivations. And, and the parents kind of kept their, and I have my mom, who is part of my history here, she's older than I am. <laughs> she's here, she's part of, part of my, my memory, and also to keep me in line in case I talk too much or do something embarrassing. But notwithstanding, uh, it was uh, just uh, doing things normal as, as Americans would, and that's my immigrant experience. Don't show off your Czechishness. Don't be an immigrant. Be an American. You know, the, the problem was, what's an American? And as, uh, uh, you know, is it Roy Rogers? Is it, uh, you know, Lawrence Welk? And, and you know, you kind of develop these images of people. And um, what we find out is that people have stories. And you know, not everybody's just an American. They have, they have a history. But I think the real breakthrough came in 1989. This uh, was uh, a, a life-changing moment for our family because this was the time we could realize that the Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia became a free country. And the uh, possible, the impossible now became possible. And it was, there was the ability to return to your place of birth. So my wife, who's the, the uh, real American, uh, I guess, uh, and she got on the phone, called the travel agent, and as soon as we could get visas, we, we were back to the old uh, old country. And so that was sort of the acclimation, the uh, normalization of getting back and coming back on that bridge. And we talk about Czech Republic and the, the most about bridges and about contacts. Uh, this was at a very exciting time to find out what those similarities were. So how do we now cross over into the cultural realm? Well, uh, for me, uh, my history had been pretty much uh, Philistine. I wasn't much of a, a cultural buff. I'm not like Milos or Jerry, you know, who really spend their time in art. But I started to begin an appreciation of art. I think it goes back to my college days at Augustana College. And I had some fine arts uh, professors, and I had Egon Viner, who's my pottery professor, who had sculptures festooned around this town. And he got me encouraged in art. And he was from Austria. And he was an Austrian Jew who left uh, during the Nazi time. So he was uh, a bit of an inspiration for me. And then I sort of picked up on oh, art. And I, uh, being a banker, a lawyer, I had uh, the ability to purchase uh, art. And I started collecting. And I, I started to focus on art, the Czech art. Why? Well, it's as good as any other kind of art. But it wasn't really recognized. And that's sort of the, the business instinct in me, is saying, you could get it for a pretty good price and still get high quality stuff. That's sort of a check trade, isn't it? <laughs> hey, this is pretty good.